Hello and welcome to the Citizen Executive Interview. Today we're talking with Joran Forsberg, the CEO of Contargia. Welcome, Joran. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. First of all, let's address the most recent news from Novartis and it's a phase three canopy two trial. The results were disappointing for Novartis, but what is your assessment and how does this affect Contargia? Yeah, so, so, so my assessment is that uh, Novartis have an antibody against interleukin 1b. They have shown some very, very strong results uh, uh, in hypothesis generating trials uh, at early stages of uh, lung cancer development. And there is lots of support for that in, in the literature. And Novartis, uh, based on those data, started three different phase three trials in early, let's say mid-stage lung cancer and late stage lung cancer. And this first trial to read out was the late stage lung cancer where much less is known about the relevance of uh, targeting only IL-1 beta. And it's also performed in a much more heterogeneous patient population. So it was obviously a trial that there was much less information and support for than let's say the upcoming tri trials. And, and what it means, so it, it, in reality, it, it won't mean a lot for our development plans. We are focusing on early stages of, of the cancer development and in other segments where we have a preclinical support of what we're doing. So just to be clear, what are the similarities and differences between uh, CANO4 and CANAKINABAB and the uh, development programs in your own words? Yeah, so, so the interleukin-1 system consists of two forms of interleukin-1, it's alpha and beta, and uh, the CANAKINABAB uh, antibody is designed to, let's say, only bind IL-1 beta. Uh, so it's very, very specific. Uh, CANO4, which developed by Cantarga, has a much broader mechanism of action. So in addition to IL-1 beta, it also blocks IL-1 alpha. And IL-1 alpha and IL-1 beta often works in pairs, and, and they are often found together in the tumor microenvironment. And in principle, they have the same signaling pathways. Uh, in addition, we also since we're binding the receptor, we can attract natural killer cells to get into the tumor area to eradicate cancer cells. So we have a much broader mechanism of action compared to Novartis. You have an ongoing trial in pancreatic cancer that has shown interesting interim data, and you just applied to start a new trial with CANO4 in the same indication. Can you please describe the trials and the rationale for this kind of strategy? So the ongoing pancreatic cancer trial is a first-line combination with gemcitabinabraxane. Uh, and gemcitabinabraxane is given to approximately 50% of the patients uh, in Europe and United States. Uh, the, the other 50% get something called fulfirinox. Uh, we've seen promising results in gemcitabinabraxane combination, but in preclinical models, uh, we see very strong synergies with both 5-FU and with oxaliplatin, which are two of the active ingredients in fulfirinox. So I think, to, first of all, we, we want to, let's say, get hold of all first-line patients. So therefore, it's rational to, 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 to go for both combinations. But also, with the amount of data we have developed in parallel with gemcitabinopraxin, we believe that pancreatic cancer is a good uh, indication to work in. And we also have very strong synergies with the new combination. So we will do this uh, development in parallel. And so it's not a question of replacing one or another. It's, it's more parallel development. And then with time, as we learn more, we can obviously make adjustments to the strategy. But right now, it's development of both. Great, thank you. So the R&D pipeline is expanding. Can you please then summarize the news flow you expect from Canal 4 studies over the next, let's say, 12 to 24 months? Yeah, absolutely. So, so, so the, the first uh, uh, end pointer to, to read out now would be pancreatic uh, phase 2a results in uh, 
in combination with gemcitabine and braxin. So we have previously reported uh, uh, response data in, uh, in the majority of patients uh, and that we see that we have higher response rates than you would expect from chemotherapy alone. Uh, but what's equally important is uh, that these responses are durable and that you can get a, a readout on progression-free survival and durability of responses. So all, all those data should be ready by during Q2. So, so the plan is to present everything uh, then. Uh, in non-small cell lung cancer, recruitment is still ongoing and uh, we, we want to be transparent, but we also want to, let's say, present data that are ro robust enough and let's say with enough new material compared to what we have presented previously. So, so somewhere Q2, Q3, you should expect to get an update on what's happening in, in non-small cell lung cancer. And, and finally, we also have a trial where we combine can afford with Ketruda, and uh, you should get, expect to, to get uh, results on that trial during second half this year. And last but not least, any updates from the CAN-10 program? Yes, so the CAN-10 program is then uh, developed uh, outside cancer, so its the focused indications are myocarditis and systemic sclerosis. And uh, right now, development is going very well. Uh, we plan to initiate the, the clinical trials uh, early next year. Uh, so where we are right now is that we are generating lots of uh, results in uh, preclinical disease models, and that will be presented uh, hopefully in, in not too far away. So it's a bit data driven. Uh, we also have are performing a first toxicology study, so the results will be presented. And we're also doing, let's say, production development, and everything is fo following communicated timelines. Okay, thank you. It was good to talk to you, Joran, today. Well, thank you. Nice talking to you as well.